Today on On The Bench, we're talking about 10 gig networking and we've got D-Link in here to demonstrate some different ways you can use 10 gig in your network. So let's put D-Link on the bench and see what's inside. All right, some of you have already jumped into 10 gig networking and some of you jumped right past it into 25, 50, 100, and a few of you stopped off at 40 on the way and realized, well, why bother? But for those of you who haven't or are just getting into audio and video over IP, 10 gig is probably something you're asking a lot of questions about. So I've got my friends at D-Link to send me a couple switches so we can talk about some of the differences and some of the ways you can deploy 10 gig on your network. All right, so first, let's start with a couple concepts. So within 10 gig, you've got two different ways you can connect. You can connect with an SFP, which is gonna be this little box right here. I'm gonna hold it up to my upper overhead camera there. It's a very small little box there that snaps into the front of these switches and this is your fiber optic connector connector it's a transceiver so that you can get the signal a long distance away over a fiber you also have these little cables here these are the same type of transceivers but they've got a copper cable connected to them and it's locked in at whatever length it comes. These are great for wiring inside of racks. So if your storage is in the rack or your transmitter and receivers are in the same rack, you don't have to buy this expensive dongle here. You can use one of these less expensive dongles right here. And these are actually about 10 to $15 depending on the length and the speed. So they're really inexpensive compared to a couple hundred dollars and up on these transceivers down here. Okay, so good to know. Now these all connect in the same way. So we pop a cap. We're going to slide that in and then I'm going to connect it to either my storage or to another switch and voila, we've now got connectivity between either two switches or our storage, any other device. And that's a nice 10 gig connection right there. Now we've also got copper connections as well. These ports down here on this switch are 10 gig over copper. This same speed, but it's gonna use a different cable and those cables sometimes are more expensive because they're using thicker copper um, and they have some distance limitations, whereas fiber, we can go much longer. So when you're deciding upon your switch, look at the distances between all the sources and the devices you're using to decide whether you're gonna use SFPs, copper, or these pre-built copper cables right here. Okay, now some of you, if you're in the editorial world, you may have bought a new NAS that's got one or two 10 gig connections on the back. And not everybody in your facility needs 10 gig. So for that, D-Link has got one of their smaller DGS series. Now this one here only has four 10 gig connections, meaning you could have one or two editors plus your storage connected. So they've got high speed connectivity, but you're also sharing those 10 gig links to these 16 users right here that are on one gig. Those users may not need to edit as many streams or they may not need as much data, so we don't need to put an expensive 10 gig adapter. D-Link also has this compact DGS series in eight ports of 10 gig all the way up to 16 ports of 10 gig. So we can get it in some different sizes and they're relatively inexpensive. It's got some layer two and some layer three features so it can be your managed switch in the environment and it comes with enough 10 gig to get you where you need to be plus some one gig. Now know that all these ports are always backwards compatible. So if you've got a purely 10 gig switch like these down below, but you need to connect a couple one gig devices, no problem, plug them in, the port will automatically sort of down convert to the speed that it needs for that. All right, so let's take the DGS out of the mix for a minute and let's talk about the DXS series that we've got down below. All right, so a couple pieces to notice. We got two switches that are nearly identical. They have the same number of ports, but the ports are different. The one on the bottom has all copper ports with a couple of, uh, of 10 gig SFPs here. And the one above it is all SFPs with a couple copper on the end. So same type of switch, they're all 24 port switches. And if you're counting the front little uh, holes there, you're gonna notice there's actually 28 minus these uh, console ports down here. So let's ignore those for a minute. So there's 24 active ports, but there's four spares down here. These are your copper and these are, are the SFPs. They actually negotiate between these two ports here. So they're the same port numbers you can just use one or the other. So while it looks like it's 28, it's really 24. Now things to bear in mind when you're picking a switch. You want to ensure that the port has enough available bandwidth to have 10 gig up and 10 gig back because these are transceivers, meaning they're bi-directional. The data goes both ways. So when you're looking at network switches, get into the manual and determine how much bandwidth does every port have on the switch. Second to that, 
how much bandwidth does the backplane of my switch, meaning how much total throughput can it put through the switch? You want to ensure that there's enough for every port on the network, especially if you're doing AV over IP, you don't want there to be any buffer overruns or any packet losses because, well, you chose a cheap switch and it didn't have enough throughput. So all these are good things to bear in mind when you're choosing a switch for your network needs. In an AV over IP world, you also want to bear in mind what encoders you're using. Does my encoder use SFP connectors for long distance fiber runs, or is it using copper connectors for simple, you know, just CAT6 or CAT7 cabling? All good things. Now, the other one I really like about these switches here as compared to the DGS is it's got some replaceable parts on the backside. So if we flop to our overhead cam here, we can actually see it comes with one power supply and that power supply is swappable, meaning I can pull it out and replace it and I can add a second one so that I get true redundancy. Let's face it, if this is the backbone to my AV matrix, I want to ensure I've got a second power supply to ensure there's no problems and I never lose data. If this is the backbone to my editorial environment, well, you dang well better ensure you've got a second power supply. In addition to that, they've got replaceable fan cartridges. So we've got the ability here to swap out fans if you're in a dusty environment and have those um, spinning all the time ensuring that we've got the cleanest network switch on the market. All right, so these are good things to bear in mind. Now, the DGS series also has one other trick up its sleeve. They have a version that only comes with eight ports. And the same way that you can see us pull power supplies, you can swap ports on the front of the unit. So it comes with eight, and you can add two more cartridges to give you the total of 24. So if you're in a place where eight is good enough, and you're not sure when you need to go to 16 or 24, you can get a switch that allows you that overhead to grow. Now in choosing a switch, always bear in mind, get more than you need. Meaning, look, if you only have four people who need 10 gig, get one that supports eight because you never know when you're just gonna need to blow up and get that extra burst of uh, connectivity there. If you're at eight, get 16. Buy more than you need because you'll never regret that, having those extra ports. Okay, so copper, fiber, keep those in mind when you're choosing your port types. Uh, SFPs for the long distance run, small compact switches for those who don't need a lot of connectivity or you need it in a more, you know, smaller chassis for taking on the road. All things to bear in mind when choosing a switch. Make sure you take a look at D-Link because they've got something to fit all those needs. And I'm even seeing some 25 gig connections come into play for connecting up to the storage on these. All right, that's D-Link. This has been On The Bench and we'll see you on the next episode.